Information gathered and released for this episode and other episodes was gathered through my own personal experiences and interviews while dealing with gangs out on the street or in custody. I also read many C files, confidential sections, and background notes of police and corrections records. In addition, I was privy to intelligence reports by police and corrections agency for my work and research. Thus, I was able to gain an accurate description of individuals and document events that transpired, I realize some of these things are still viewed from the eye of the beholder, but I stand by most of my information or I would not release it. There are no huge secrets revealed here. I do not release much info from active cases, especially if it has not been adjudicated yet. Most of my information has been validated and proven in a court of law. This episode will cover some of the key points of the Northwestern Familia prison game. Well, I realize I am not ever 100% perfect as stated on my previous disclaimer. I dealt with individuals and research information dealing with Norteños, Northern Structure, and NF for over 40 years. I'd like to take time now to thank the many people on both sides of the fence that I learned from. Once again, I'd also like to emphasize I am not glamorizing any of these groups. I'm just trying to educate people on some of their history. I'm definitely not condoning them, for as you will see time and time again, while they advocate for cultural pride, they mostly kill and hurt their own people. The gang lifestyle often leads to drug abuse, misery, jail, prison, and eventually an early grave. My career in corrections spanned for over 30 years. I started off working at the notorious Folsom Prison, working most of my time at Sacramento County State Prison, commonly known as New Folsom. While I was never on the gang unit there, I fed a lot of gang information to people on the gang squad that I trusted. Attended monthly gang intelligence meetings provided by the Folsom Training Unit, and occasionally even conducted my own presentations for staff at Seat Facility. Over the years, I've received numerous awards for my work. I was the founder of the International Latino Gang Investigators Association, where we put on presentations about the NF in such places as San Jose, California. I also did my own trainings in places like San Francisco and many other cities on the West Familia. I enjoy training and sharing my experiences as I grew up around gangs all of my life. I was born in Yakima, Washington. To this very day, it is a Norteño stronghold. And way back in the late 1970s, one of my neighbors was a Ghost Rider outlaw motorcycle member. Another neighbor had a brother who was from the West Familia prison gang, who I had to get blessings from as I dated his sister. A different neighbor was a Fresno Norteño, or F-14, before most Fresnos became bulldogs. I was never a gang member myself, but came very close to joining the Norteños because the Mexican Mafia and Sorenos tried to kill me in 1981 through 1982. Yes, contrary to what some believe, there was Mexican Mafia in West Virginia in Washington State and other prison gangs way back then, just not in large numbers. Here, in the upper right-hand picture, I'm riding shotgun with a well-known pimp and drug dealer from Yakima who was the father of the founder of the Norteño Big Dogs prison gang in Washington state. Local homies named me El Tecolote 
or night owl. There are a lot of gang investigators today who doubt there was ever any presence of North Dakota in Washington State in the late 1970s or 80s. But yet, they are just now figuring out that Washington State had influence back in the day, but had drifted off into apples and oranges. This has been corrected in recent years by the NF, with the big dogs being ordered to lay down. The founder resisted and was hit for it in a Washington State prison. My way out of the gang lifestyle was joining the United States Marine Corps. You can read more about this in my autobio, The Life and Times of a Vato Loco. The NF was first called La Nuestra Familia Mexicana, per California Gang Task Force members I spoke to and via a very reliable confidential source who is still alive today and who dealt with key prison gang members around this time period. In 1965, in opposition to La M, when a draft constitution was written and smuggled out of Chino's Palm Hall, the document was then sent out to Soledad and agreed upon. Per NFM, Child of Hernandez memoirs, about a dozen convicts considered joining the organization, but when Chalo told them that it would be a lifetime commitment or they could step back right then and there, all stepped back except five. The five shown in the middle picture who were the only originals. Perhaps this is where some people get the idea that the organization was first called Familia Cinco, but as we will soon see, this is not the case. The group soon spread to San Quentin. Little John Valdez from Little Valley was selected as the first padre or leader of the group. Chalo Hernandez from Bakersfield was the number two guy, but the real power behind the throne. When John Valdez stepped down, Juan Lips Valdez from Basset Grande shown here on the right with the arrow, became the new padre. The lower right-hand picture was given to me by Tony Casas, a prison gang task force member since 1972. He received it from San Quentin investigator, Sergeant Bill Hankins, who took the picture. Tony told me he recalled it being taken in January of 1969. Lips is standing with other NFM members identified right after the shoe war. Smiling, Standing next to him with the other arrow is a young Tarzan Castaneda from Pomona 12th Street, who had just been made an NF Carnal, or brother, for his actions fighting La Eme at San Quentin. Today, La Eme controls Pomona 12th Street and most Serrano gangs in Southern California. But back in the late 1960s and early 70s, there were Mexican Mafia in Northern California, and many of the early NF, including all of the founding five, were from Southern California. I should know, I have many in-laws from Pomona, including one who was a CDC sergeant and parole agent who had many gangsters on her caseload. Tarzan was a prolific bank robber and died while in custody of the federal BOP on November 16th, 2020. I also had a cousin, rest in peace, who introduced me to many of the Chino sinners, car club and gang he ran with in the early 1980s. My primo new guys like longtime NF shot caller, David D.C. Cervantes. The Chino Sinners had sided with the NF in the late 1970s to early 80s because of their war with the nearby Ontario Black Angels who had backing from La M. Today, the M and Sureños control Chino, Pomona, as well as Ontario and hundreds of other barrios all over Southern California. Right away, there were some people who had problems with the way this new family of Mexicans was run. Inmate David Corona from Maravilla in East LA took his followers as Familia Cinco. One of my sources recalls Corona as being a very sharp dresser and charismatic among convicts. Some people, even Black Bob Vasquez himself, who joined after they started and later on became a general in the NF, have stated that Familia Cinco was first in the early 1960s and absorbed into the NF. But that is not the case. Sergeant Bill Hankins, who was there on the yards when the Mexican Mafia and other prison gangs began, makes no mention of Familia Cinco starting them whatsoever. According to informed sources who were alive at the time when the Nuestra Familia started, Familia Cinco started after the Nuestra Familia Mexicana as a totally separate group. And as the letter here shows, Familia Cinco was active until at least 1974, but eventually fizzled out by the mid-1970s. Some Familia Cinco even ended up joining La M in the mid-1970s, as this letter describes. A sombrero with a machete, 
or sword and blood dripping off of it became the official symbol for the NF. It was designed by a Filipino inmate named Rodney Shark Surreal, who was later killed at DVI and Tracy on May 3rd, 1974, allegedly by MBA member Spider Herrera de Wilmas, also alleged to have been involved with Manuel, the mad Korean Nerva from San Diego. It is erroneous that some people call Robert Babo Sosa the founder and first leader of the NF. It is true, Babo participated in the 1968 shoe war but was not the leader yet. Here in the lower right-hand picture, you could barely see him peeking over the shoulder of another NF member. If he had been the leader, he'd likely be posted up in a far more prominent position. At least that is my experience from viewing hundreds of prison gang photos. Babo was pulled to New Folsom Prison in the early 1990s, where I personally spoke to him on a facility PC yard. I'm still puzzled though. Some of the prison gang task force members told me that I could never have talked to Bobble at New Folsom in the early 1990s. I thought for a minute, maybe I was mistaken and I had the wrong guy, but it was verified he was pulled there by former Folsom investigator Sergeant Donna De La Garza, who I still communicate with. Retired warden Robert Borg also verified this occurred and told me he got a lot of flack for it by staff for placing Bobble on a PC yard at Folsom Prison. He also stated my prison gang book was very accurate, as have many former NF, so that's good enough for me. A couple of incidents preceded the infamous shoe war at San Quentin Prison. First, James Sonny Peña Delgado from New Mexico and Maravilla in East LA was killed by La Emes Robot Salas on February 4, 1968. Secondly, Philip Rebel Neri was hit. What is interesting to me is Rebel allegedly dated MA icon Cheyenne Karina's sister, and Shai supposedly dated Rebel's sister. But Rebel had sided with Shai Karina's cousin Chavo and the rebellious NFM. La M had virtually taken over San Quentin Prison by 1968 and many other prisons, and they were largely untouched until an incident occurred on Saturday, September 14, 1968, over a parachute. Inmate Hector Mad Dog Padilla was from San Jose in Northern California and associated with the newer prison gang, the Nuestra Familia Mexicana. Padilla had a nice pair of dress shoes taken from his cell. The shoes ended up being in the possession of Robot Salas from La Eme, who wore them out on the yard. Padilla then accused Salas of being a thief, and Mad Dog was stabbed in his cell for this attack. Retaliation attacks took place on Sunday, September 15th, 1968, which just so happened to be Mexican Independence Day weekend celebrations. One of the individuals hit by La Emes Poncho Amado was NFM Padre Juan Valdez. Meanwhile, the NFM, including Babo Sosa, killed an MA affiliate from Diamond Street in LA named Cricket Gallegos. The prison went on lockdown the next day, September 16th, as investigators tried to sort out who was who and investigated the incident further but this did not stop the NF war cries on September 16th, which is officially Mexican Independence Day. This is the date the NF soon adopted as their coming out anniversary date. With the assistance of CDC authorities who wanted the bloodshed stop, as well as radical leftists and inmate lawyers, peace talks took place between the MA and the NF between 1969 and 1972. This time period experienced short periods of peace, followed by breakdown attacks and escalation in violence. Some CDC staff even convinced MA shot caller Rodolfo Cheyenne Cadena to get pulled down from Folsom Prison to Chino Prison in late 1972 for peace talks. Maravilla gang members from East LA, including early MA Mexican Mafia member Louis Araujo, participated in these peace talks with the NF. Araujo was a key figure in encouraging the starting foundation of the NF, according to my mentor, Robert Mocomorel, and one of his main informants. When I retold this story to a prison gang task force member when I first started the International Latino Gang Investigators Association, they scoffed at me. But I stand by this information still. The Louis Araujo story was also verified by SSU agent Robert Marquez, who interviewed Araujo before he retired from CDC. Besides Araujo, MA shot caller Big Mike Mohan was involved in NF talks. Per Mundo Mendoza was very active in the Mexican Mafia in the 1970s. On July 11, 1972, 
Juan Valdez was hit by MA members Victor Beaver Mesa and Ronnie Salazar. Salazar was treated like an adopted son by Mexican Mafia honorary godfather Joe Morgan. Ronnie even once took a murder rap for Papa Joe. Valdez dropped out of the NDF, clearing way for new elections. Salazar also dropped out and debriefed to the prison gang task force. In October 1972, NF member Leonard Yogi Bear Arias was killed by Mexican Mafia members David Loco Gallegos, Robert Biggs Mata, and Salvador Tani Vargas at Tehachapi's Macho Program. Present at Tehachapi at the time was Pieface Ortega. Pieface eventually became one of the first key Mexican Mafia informants for the prison gang task force. It was Pieface that stole Hector Padilla's shoes and gave them to Robot Salas the final straw that kicked off the shoe war four years earlier. The Mexican Mafia also killed two NF at the California Conservation Center located in Susanville in October 1972. On December 15, 1972, the twin Aranda brothers were stabbed on orders of Joker Rodriguez from Primera Flats. This was the adopted barrio of Shai Carina de Bakers, who had been pulled down several weeks earlier to meet with the Mexican Mafia and NF. This was the final straw of disrespect in the NF wanted revenge. Shown here is an actual crime scene photo taken at Palm Hall on December 17, 1972. As official CDC reports show, Carena did not walk calmly to his death like is shown in the movie American Me. He was surprise attacked and outflanked as he exited his cell. As the official reports read, on December 17, 1972, during afternoon release at approximately 13.05 hours, that would be 1.05 p.m. for you civilians, Rodolfo Cheyenne Cadena was hit on the second tier in Palm Hall, not the third tier that some alleged. He was stabbed 50 times and thrown over the tier as depicted in American Me, but this was not by his own. It was done by NF members Joker Mendoza and Manzanas Apocolón of the NF who were assisted by other NF members. Cadena's two bodyguards were also hit, one of whom was thrown over the tier and suffered extensive head injuries. Emmy icon Rodolfo Cheyenne Cadena was buried in his hometown of Bakersfield, and the funeral was monitored by the prison gang task force. The shoe war incident, subsequent killings and stabbings, and the death of Cadena all ended up causing deeper divisions on California prison yards. CDC then separated the two prison gangs of identified members and started a validation process. At the same time, the Norteño and Serenio movements started to grow on the street, in jail, and prison, providing a new talent pool for both prison gangs. From the 1970s on, two movements of younger gang members formed. One was largely in support of the NF, called the Norteños, in the Norte, or northern part of California, and one of them was called Sureños, who supported La M and who were mostly from Southern California. From the 1980s on, Sereno started invading Northern California, planting their flag in several cities to the point where today they have a major gang influence. But in Southern California today, there are virtually no Norteños and very few NF from there. New NF elections were held around 1973 and Robert Babo Sosa was informed he won by a message declaring he was handed the keys to the supermarket. Again, I'm not trying to glamorize any of these prison gangs. I'm just trying to give you an accurate picture of their history. After I wrote my book on the NF, Bobble's own niece contacted me and told me, thank you for getting it right. My tios, and she went on to say how their family had suffered with the deaths of the Sosa boys. The name, La Nuestra Familia Mexicana, was changed to just the NF, since other races had been allowed in. Bobble, in fact, was Puerto Rican. Bobble's car revised the structure of the NF organization and created 14 reglas, or rules. Bobble was a gangster as opposed to Chalo's more revolutionary original aims. Investigator Tony Casas, who knew and spoke to Bobble many times at the California Institution for Men in Chino, told me Bobble viewed himself more like a young Michael Corleone from the Godfather films that came out in 1971 and 1974. I've heard some say Bobble tried to create a United Raza or Nuestra Raza Unida as the predecessor to the XIV Bond's northern structure, but I can't say I ever recall seeing any hard documentation on C-files I've read, so if it did occur, it must have been very short-lived. Regardless, 
Bobble was eventually impeached for abuse of powers and for allegedly stealing funds from the NF Bank. According to the NF Constitution, membership is for life and dropouts are often targeted. There has been a retirement clause included in past NF Constitution for members who leave the organization in good standing and do not debrief. But as we'll discuss later in the Brown Bob case, they make up and change the rules as they see fit. The NF has an oath. If I go forward, follow me. If I hesitate, push me. If they, especially I am, may kill me, avenge me. If I am a traitor, kill me. Historically, the NF has been aligned with the Black Gorilla family and Africano gangs, while some of their enemies have been the Aryan Brotherhood and white gangs. This has changed in more recent years with the end of hostilities agreement. But back in the day, the Aryan Brotherhood started doing hits on the NF for La Amme. On April 21st, 1972, now former Aryan Brotherhood members, Fred Mendren and Donald Hale murdered an NF member from Stockton, California, by the name of Fred Charlie Castillo at CIM Palm Hall as a favor to Joe Morgan. The murder sealed a long-time working relationship between the AB and La Amme. An example of how this still occurs in modern times was the July 2010 assault on West Familia members Daniel Stork Perez and Rico Smiley Garcia, which occurred at USP Atlanta. The assault was committed by Federal Aryan Brotherhood member Lonnie Herbie T. Taylor. In similar fashion, longtime Aryan Brotherhood member Bobby Ray Shields was hit by Washington State Northern Structure supporter Roy Puppet Saldana in the Federal BOP in 2009. In the late 1970s, Death Row Joe Gonzalez and Bobble ordered multiple hits on NF. This was a house cleaning, including several attacks on an original West Familia Mexicana member, Chalo Hernandez. Due to all of these attacks and murders, an eternal split occurred. There was also a lot of dissatisfaction with the organization. The NF went from over 700 members in the late 1970s to barely 100 due to this internal split and house cleaning. Please stay tuned for part two coming soon. And don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button so you are informed of future episodes. Thanks and stay safe.